What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Copie Podcast, a Nintendo show, episode 59. I am one of your hosts, Caster Risk, joined alongside Mr. Copie himself, Zach Risk. And in case you're new here, we are an all Nintendo <laughs> podcast that posts each and every week on YouTube.com slash Copie Gaming, as well as SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher Radio, other various podcast services. It's Copie Podcast. And each week we discuss the games we're playing, the news of the Nintendo pipeline, and then a topic of the show. And so if you like all that, be sure to review us. Click that, smash that, pummel that subscribe button. <laughs> along with a little bell to be notified of when we post videos. And uh, yeah, I think that's all you need to know. But yeah, be sure to click that subscribe button because we post erratically and inconsistently. Um, but at the same time, very consistently and very routinely. So... It's it's a gamble. Like you click the subscribe button, you know you're gonna be getting some content by Kopai. Is it gonna be at six a.m. or six p.m.? It's exciting because you never really know for sure. Because we have jobs and school and relationships and other things to do, and so sometimes we just miss these deadlines. And you gotta click that subscribe button to know, hey, new video, let's go. As I mentioned, I'm joined by Mr. Kopai himself, Zach Risk. Zach, yeah. how you doing? I'm doing awesome. What have you been playing? Mm. What are you up to? Uh, I've been playing, well, more ARMS, of course. It's oh. been the test punch this oh. weekend again. Yeah. Uh, You've been playing, what is it, uh, 10 hours or more you're clocked in at? Yeah. But how? It's kind, of, it's kind of a bummer that it'll all go away when the actual game comes out, though. It'll be kind of irrelevant, but... Yeah, but I'm wondering if... Okay, so we've had two test f- punches now, and each weekend there's one, two, three, four hours. Mm. How do you have ten hours? Well, I've gone in there, um, <laughs> you know, and done a little bit of like just the, looking at, the, just the listening to the menu. I have listened to the menu a couple of times too, but <laughs> and I often go and log in. They've been running them um consistently earlier than the time starts so that might also play yeah. a little bit into it because it goes a little bit before and then sometimes also a little bit after and i'm sure and i've usually done that each time is i'll stay from 10 minutes prior to five or whatever so minutes that it, they stay on so um that's probably playing a factor plus the times i've gone and listened to the menu music and stuff and tried yeah. the, just the warming up with the internet connection and all that um, but yeah, I've been mostly playing, um, that when I get an opportunity and then a lot of Overwatch too, which is kind of non Nintendo, but or non Nintendo, but, yeah. um, a lot of Overwatch, um, and kind of, we finally, we finally got into that. We, uh, have kind of been playing a lot more on the PC lately. I think, uh, I don't really know why we kind of just got drawn to it. I think just kind of maybe being all digital, we were kind of, you know, up in our digital libraries on the computer, and then we were like, hey, Overwatch, yay, cool. Well, Overwatch was and sounding so, kind of fun, but we both owned it on PlayStation 4, and it just always just, I felt kind of weird having it on there for some It's just like shooters and me, I've traditionally, I've done a lot of shooters on the computer. Like, I played through Half-Life and Half-Life 2 on the computer, and I've done a lot of Crisis, and I did all of Battlefield 4, I think, on the PC and stuff. So I've done a mm-hmm. lot of shooters on there. And it just feels very at home, and I like the quick reflexes of you know being able to yeah. do 360s and all that, like no problem, just spinning around like a madman. 360 man. no scopes. Yeah, and uh, so I was I was really happy to get transferred to there, and then also Civ is on the PC, and it's just I, I love. That's it. true. Oh yeah, we've been playing tons of Civ. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, I actually I know the re- I've been as I've mentioned on this show numerous times. I'm super into Destiny, mm-hmm. and I was hyped for Destiny too. So I was kind of testing out my PC to see how it would work with that. And they had a free Overwatch weekend, and so I played during the free weekend and was like, I'm gonna sell my PlayStation 4 copy. Yeah, which then actually resulted in me selling a ton of physical games, which now I have Arms and Splatoon 2 and Disgaea 5 completely paid for. Yeah, which leads me into playing. Yeah, I've I've been playing tons of Overwatch with you, um, lots of Civ, um, some other Steam games that I have. Um, obviously the arms demo of sticking with spring man, loving that hoops. Mm, we'll have to talk yeah. about arms, maybe a little bit, but not too much. Cause we gave a whole episode to arms, but yeah, playing lots of hoops, love, love, love hoops. Um, which for those of you that don't know, we kind of talked about last week, how there's a volleyball mode that they gave us to try out this week. It was hoops and you it's apparently all of these modes were designed to kind of be like practices for you. So like, um the volleyball mode is supposed to teach you how to jump to punch 
like jump and punch at the same time oh. and apparently hoops was designed to help you learn how to grab people mm. effectively and so you grab the other person and then you throw them into a hoop and if you're doing it farther away and if you can manage to bounce them off stuff you get like bonus points and all of that and yeah. so um really enjoyed that but only got it like a few times during the two times i've done the test what i really uh, liked about that mode is that it was more of a mind game i felt than even some of like the fights because you really are kind of predicting and trying to know when to grab the opponent and yeah, wait for them tricky. to throw out jabs or get a special that will put them in the hoop and i thought that was really cool it was very yeah. mind reading and mind gamey yeah but very so very sold on arms yeah i'm um, just confirmed that more but i was i'm kind of like you mentioned you know it's all kind of for nothing right now because it's a demo i'm kind of like very much so in that boat as of like i haven't been like too pumped to play the demo because i'm sold on the game now I want to start collecting arms, getting my score racked up, yeah. doing ranked battles, and the demo I'm kind of like playing, and I'm like, eh, like I don't like that it just throws me around. Like I hate, I hate the whole headlock guy. The they threw in a boss battle where you can do a boss fight now, mm. and it's it's fun. Like I love how it kind of gives you a tease of like what maybe the campaign could be like or something like that. Yeah. But part of me is just like I don't. I just want to like pick my mode i want to do 1v1s i want to just practice right. that yeah and so i'm just excited the game's only a couple weeks out um so mm -hmm. yeah well um, two things about that i think that the playing the demo has definitely helped um develop a knowledge for the game and that i feel will make it so much better going when the game releases that i've developed for a sure. ton of skill and fought some really good players, and people are really starting to understand. Some people too. Yeah, understand this meta game that that um, Arms has, and I think that has been really beneficial. And uh, and it will be fun for the Invitational mm -hmm. at E3 next week. That we'll talk about that a little bit later, yeah. but we'll kind of know like a little bit of how it feels like when they're doing certain moves and doing certain combos. We'll kind of be like, oh, like we know how this plays. Um, and I am, I am glad that the demo gave me a chance to completely find out that I don't want to even dabble with motion controls. <laughs> like, I don't even want to mess yeah. with them anymore. Oh, yeah, and the other thing was just that the headlock, um, I do think that it's been kind of cool, some of the matches I've had, where if you have smart people on your team and you know how to work together, it's really cool when you kind of know to stand back because some people I fight or we're doing the headlock and they don't understand that there's friendly fire and people are just yeah. going all crazy. They're like, rrr, 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 and it's like, you know, yeah, you need definitely. to kind of take your turns. And some teams you get on, though, <laughs> and the people are like, they know what's up. And you kind of take turns doing your specials on him. That's probably my problem is I get out. stupid people. Yeah. Because I've had it where, like, I go in and I grab him, which is kind of hard to do because normally his punches, he has, for those of you that don't know and didn't get a chance punches. to play the demo, yeah, he has six arms, Headlock does. And basically what Headlock is is, presumably kind of the final boss or one of the kind of main bosses of whatever campaign there is and as the name implies it is this entraption or contraption on top of various armed characters heads um and so like i fought uh spring man that had it on his head and it was all trapped but the the head has four arms and then there's the normal person's two arms and they're basically corrupted or, you know, possessed by the headlock on the top of their head. And so they're super tough to beat because they have the metal head on top of them. So mm -hmm. they're just super defensive. But then usually the arms are um, bigger, stronger, and there's six of them. So if you punch at him, he has like four arms to override yours. And so it's super hard to make a move on him. You have to be very coordinated and there were several times where I'd get in and grab him, which is a guaranteed few punches on him, which is awesome if you can grab someone. And people would, like, use their super while I'm pulling him into me. Yeah. And friendly fire is on when you do this. There's no way to turn that off because you're punching people. Mm -hmm. Like, it would make it makes sense that you get hurt when someone punches at you. And people would just be, like, attacking me or punching all everyone around. I think I got KO'd once by someone on my team. I'm like, you guys are all idiots. But, yeah, I think I had, like, maybe one match where I had people that I could tell knew what was going on because I'd pull them in for a grab and you'd see them all just, like, start dodge or, like, just put up their shields and just be waiting for <laughs> the moment to strike, yeah. you know. And so, but yeah, arms just continue to be awesome. Um, as I mentioned, I also used um, some of the money I got. Um, recently, I w did a big GameStop binge. I think I tweeted it out with the Kopai Gaming Twitter, like, my little f filet of uh, $20 gift cards for the eShop. Um, they didn't have any like $50 cards at the GameStop. So 
Um, but I got Disgaea 5. I'm only a few hours into it, and I lost a few that a few hours because the game does not autosave, so be wary of that. There's even actually some in-game dialogue where one of the characters says, did you make sure you saved? I thought they were just being jokey, but nope, make sure you save. I thought it was kind of cool you can and, save in the demo. Save. Yeah. yeah. I don't think it, they. I, I think it's confirmed that that demo doesn't carry over though. At least yeah, it didn't carry yeah. over for me. I wouldn't be surprised, but 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 no, that game's beautiful, fun. We talked about it a little bit last week and did a review of roundup. So if you want to get our thoughts on you know what the critics are saying, you can go check that out on our YouTube channel. But I'm enjoying the game. It's very much so. It's it's a tactics game like Fire Emblem or any other tactics game, and I'm so used to t- um, Fire Emblem because I've played through all of Awakening. Um, all of Fates, uh, Birthright, Conquest, the mobile game. I'm very m- used to the Fire Emblem formula, and this is very similar to that, but just different enough that I'm kind of overwhelmed with just how I need to relearn some mechanics. So that's like a big hindrance for me right now is I'm a little disengaged because I'm just like, this is kind of hard for me to wrap my brain around. But every other part of the game I love, the writing is hilarious. Yeah, there's a, I, I had a legit laugh out loud moment with that picture I sent you, Zach, where it's just like... One of the little penguin guys, like, hey, dude, I totally peed my pants in that battle yesterday. Yeah. I'm just like laughing my, uh, just, yeah, laughing so hard. And so, um, writing's great, very, like, you know, Japanese persona sort of vibe to all of it. And so, um, if you didn't pick up this guy, make sure you check out that demo, see if it's your taste. And I think it's a game that's going to be right at home on Switch because. You can, every level you can replay and try to get higher scores on. If you get the top score, you get a bonus loot item. Mm -hmm. They've actually, we mentioned, I think previously, that they carried over all the PlayStation trophies to the game. And it's not like it's like just hidden away. Like there's actually like a nice little person in the kind of the menu system that provides, oh, airplane flying over. Sorry about that. Um, That provides like even a platinum trophy. Like there's a, like an achievement you get in game for having everything in the game and it's very much so formatted like trophies and you can just screen cap it and share it so it's not like it's tucked away or hidden away like they've made it a pretty clean system for people yeah and so it's also, very much so at home on switch yeah it's also super super gorgeous and also very nostalgic in an interesting way i thought i was like playing it and just the way it's it's not necessarily it has more of a hand-drawn sort of feel to it i'd say than like sprite based but it does yeah. still feel very much like a classic like PS1, SNES kind of tactics RPG kind of yeah. throwback. And I really like that. Yeah, deep, deep mechanics. You know, you have to make sure. Um, I got a little bit into it, but I just, I, I'm, not, I'm definitely not an expert. But um, there's kind of a combination of, you know, in Fire Emblem, you have your dedicated heroes. Like you have the people you play as. They're your team. They're the people you talk to and bond with. But in Disgaea, you have that, and you kind of have dis, um, expendable troops you can have. And you can actually, I believe it's kind of like called recruitment, where you recruit these demons, and you can really buff them out, where you can make it so they specialize in magic or stamina and all that. You can name them custom, and like they have a random name generator. And sometimes it's like, you know, Bob, Tom, Henry... But there is one name that popped up that was called Death Santa. And I'm like, well, I'm going to go with Death Santa. That's like the coolest name for my character. And they're just like a dis- like an expendable little uh, minion I had on my team named Death Santa. And they were specialized in attack. And it was just kind of cool like that you can have kind of just like this little army you build up of like your own personal people that you named and created. Mm. But that you just you can get so much in the weeds of that of, you know, all right, I need a special character on my team that specializes in attack or health for this one specific map. And so I can imagine you can, there's so many variables to make your high score, which playing back into the Switch, it's a game that's very much so pick up, experiment with your army a little bit, experiment with the menus and the items and inventory management, and then take it home, plug it into your TV and do the actual battle, you know, like it's Yeah, just, definitely. And then you, then you take it on the go. So it makes me super excited for Fire Emblem, but this is a perfect kind of holdover until that. Yeah, and so. also it's just great with the Switch. It seems it's making more people play longer story-based games because of that um, portability and, it, you know, being able to take it with you and and complete a little bit, like you say, making some team members or something. It, it's a little bit more convenient than having to strictly play at home on your big screen or something like that yeah um, and also sometimes you just feel a little bit more 
like doing a grind on one of those long story games in handheld mode or something. So yeah, that's yeah, really sit awesome. on the couch, watch a Netflix show, mm-hmm. and just have it just going at it. Yeah. Um, and the other thing with that is having it digitally. I think definitely is a huge perk. Yeah. And so if you haven't invested in an SD card, maybe doing a few digital games on your Switch, I think it really enhances the Switch experience just to have a few games on the system ready to go. Mm-hmm. Like even if you have like a carrying case for cartridges just a difference when you have and digital, also so. I, what i noticed too is that i mean if you're really big on collecting and physical copies um people have been posting switch versions of like eShop titles uh like that you can print out for cases for switch cases basically and you can buy the same yeah. size and they look gorgeous like people i saw the shovel knight one and a metal slug and they're doing some really good work on that and hmm. so you can just basically have a physical copy, but it's just on a digital. So that's kind of cool yeah. if you're really like into that, which I am and I might consider doing one day, like just to have for display purposes or something. Yeah. Yeah. For me, my mindset's kind of shifted. Like I'm kind of actually trying to maybe clean off my shelf a little bit as far yeah, as, yeah. you know, the games I have up there. And my mindset's kind of shifted more towards Amiibo, you know, pop vinyl figures and having those as kind of my physical representation of, you know, fandom or whatever it may be. Like, you know, if you want to know how diehard I am about Nintendo, we'll just look at my shelf and see the 50 Amiibo, you know. Right. Or my big Fallout Pip-Boy, you know, thing and all that. And so, Kayla, yeah, no, Kayla that's... was like, we should sell that. And I was like, my Pip-Boy? Pip-Boy? Like, no way am I My son. Pip-Boy's is one broken. Of the most Rare Someone dropped mine. special edition items that there is. Like, there's no way I'm getting rid of this. Yeah, I was moving out of my dorm or my apartment from college last year, and someone dropped mine when they were helping me move out. Ah. And like, oh, sorry, was that expensive? And it was like cracked on the floor, and I'm like, yes. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> but it, it's it's broken in such a way that it can be easily glued back together. But I haven't bothered to glue it back. It's just in its case now, locked away like a secure pit boy that it is. Has a great case. Yeah, it, it, so it's it's perfect in its case. Like I don't need it out of its case right now. And then I have a little Vault Boy Pip, uh, Funko Pop on top. So yeah. anyway, enough about collectibles and what we've been playing. That's what we've been playing. So um, do with that as you will. But before we get into the topic of the show, let's unclog the Nintendo pipeline. Each week we dive deep into Nintendo's pipes to find out what's happening <laughs> in the world of Mario and friends. And this week we have six Ooh. pipe plug and news bits that need to be dealt with. Ooh, and so let's get to it. Number one, Shantae Half Genie Hero is coming out to the Nintendo Switch this week. Last week it was confirmed to be coming to Europe, and now U.S. Switch owners have confirmation that they will be able to get their midi little hands on it um, on the 2D platformer. And Wayward or Way Forwards game will release on June 8th and feature HD Rumble. And so, cool. I believe I believe it's a port. Obviously, mm-hmm. I think the game's been out, yeah. but they have ported it over. Given it HD, HD Rumble, and I actually have not played the Shantae games before, but I hear they get lots of love. They do, and so they, I, some of them are really good, supposedly. Like, they're recommended a lot, and I've been really interested in the series. I thought about picking up a copy here recently, but I was, like, hearing rumors that it was coming to the Switch, and, every, and I was like, I'm going to wait for that. So I'm not sure when I'll be able to pick it up, but definitely is on my radar yeah. as one of the games that I want. Yeah. I may I may dip into my uh, eShop pool of money here and maybe dig into my Splatoon 2 fun a little bit for some of these smaller little indies since Splatoon 2 is so far out. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, I don't know. Definitely, I want to play a Shantae game. I'll have to see where this fits into the whole, you know, is this a good starting point? Is this like, you know, at a point where the game's pretty well developed? You know, where do I go from there? Something to definitely, if you've played Shantae, let me know in the comments if that's if this is a good place to start off. Number two, the F-Zero-styled game Red Out from Nicholas will be coming out July 25th, I believe, um, delayed from a June 30th release date uh, that was originally planned. Or maybe it was like the end of Q2 or something was what it was supposed to be, which was June 30th, but now it's officially July 25th, according to a weekly ad campaign by GameStop. Yeah, so if you're clamoring for a new racing game and fast racing Neo just wasn't enough for you, Red Out will surely satisfy that itch and it's coming to retail. So maybe you didn't pick up fast racing Neo because you're someone that wants a physical copy. Red Out's perfect for you. Looks awesome. Announcement trailer is online if you want to go find that on YouTube. Looks like a fast racing Red Out game. Yeah, I've heard some so. people having buyer's regret about um, fast racing Neo that they should have held out and just, I mean, a lot of people got it 
to sort of satisfy their racing thirst until Mario Kart came out, and then they ended up yeah. just finding out that maybe they could have just waited because they've been playing a lot of Mario Kart, but fast racing uh, yeah. has been kind of, or fast RMX has been sort of put on the side. And I, I thought oh, yeah, I'd fast seen, RMX, my bad. Yeah, I thought I'd seen some uh, things that said that this actually looked a little bit better than fast RMX, but um, oh, definitely, yeah. yeah. I'll check that I think out. it is. I think it, I think it's a little bit more. You know, I don't think it's as, as small of a studio, and I think they've maybe had a little bit more time and production into the game. I don't think it's just. I think it's coming to other consoles as well, and so I think it's a little bit of a larger scale than Fast RMX, which was kind of you know specifically for the Wii U and then the Switch. Um, but I, no, I I love Fast Racing Neo or Fast RMX, but it's just one of those things where I have. I love all the games on the Switch, but I've only played like three of them because there's just not enough time, you know. Barely have gone back to Snake Pass and have even touched like Super Bomberman beyond opening it. I know, so. and I keep thinking about that too. That I, I really yeah. want to. I the whole switching to digital for that is really tempting. Yeah, definitely. Uh, number three, there was tons of Zelda news this past week, as usual. Although most of the stories were feature pieces on the impact and influence of the game and how it's, uh, you know, influenced developers and the overall game design of games moving forward. However, kind of a particularly interesting point was from Ayanuma himself, the creator of the modern Zelda. Um, and he has said that the new standard for Zelda moving forward will be open air games, mm -hmm. a la Breath of the Wild. And so for those of you that were maybe worried about Breath of the Wild being a, maybe a one time or a... You know, every other Zelda is open air. Um, he said in an interview that moving forward, this is the standard. So it's fine by me. This is yep. This is Zelda now, and that's a okay. Um, I mean, I just can imagine it. that if they actually went for a sequel that took the scope, you know, that wasn't like a Majora's Mask style thing where they kind of downplayed it a little bit. It's still like the open air thing, you know, but they don't go as hardcore because they want to maybe mm -hmm. do it quicker, like. A, a Zelda title that doesn't take 10 years to make again, you know? Um, yeah. But if they actually did just do like a real, the next Zelda is the step up from this. I, I just imagine that would be absolutely insane, you know? Yeah. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. I, I mean, that's the thing is they can change, they can add, you know, right now we have what the magnet, the kinetic thing, um, like the kinetic effect where you stop time. Mm -hmm. um, and then there, yeah, and then bombs. Um, you ha So you have like those kind of like four main things which really shape how you interact with the world. Just by adding one or two things or switching out one thing with another thing or making it so there's bombs that bounce or, you know, just changing any one of those things and shaping the world around that completely makes a whole new, you know, world to explore. And adding in some, you know, just a new collection of shrines that mimic those new objects. Like, I mean... They started off, I mean, relatively kind of small with only having it. So it's like, okay, magnets, kinetic, bombs. And they can add so much more to that as far as, you know, add an object that does this or a boomerang or something like that. You know, like there's so many options for that. And so mm -hmm. it'll be interesting to see how they can explore that. Yeah. I'm hoping that their next thing is Majora's Mask style where they do go. Instead, of, instead of having runes on your Sheikah slate, you have masks that change the way you interact with the world even if it's like five masks how cool would that be yeah. you could turn like a little goron man and roll around i can't imagine Ooh. them actually going act like to something that specifically majora's mask-esque you know um nah, it man. seems like that would just be so it. <clears throat> it'd be like a direct sequel from majora's mask they'd have to do e3 next week and so They're yeah well, in it. but i could see them doing something similar like where you put on costumes or something and it's just like yeah. not quite the rip off from Majora's Mask, but basically like the same sort of idea. Um, and that, yeah. that'd be really awesome. Hats. Maybe, yeah. maybe it's like an Odyssey spinoff where <laughs> you have your little cap man. Anyway, yeah. number four, Saber interacted developer of NBA playgrounds and the Nintendo switch will be giving early owners of the game. Shaq Fu, a legend reborn for free this fall. Uh, quote, we had every intention of launching online play for NBA. Oh my gosh, my wife is barfing over here in the background. Oh, she didn't. Even, she didn't. Even, she has her headphones in. She didn't even realize how loud she was. She was clearing her throat. Um, did you hear that? Yeah, I did. <laughs> it was yeah, it was loud. Anyway, um, 
Quote, we had every intention of launching online play for NBA Playgrounds on Nintendo Switch within the last within days of release, but despite our best efforts, it didn't play out that way, said Matthew Karch, CEO of Saber, or Sabre, maybe. Uh, quote, we sincerely apologize for the delay, and we want to let everyone know that the fix will be coming very soon, but words are cheap and games are not. So, we're giving everyone that bought NBA Playgrounds on Nintendo Switch before the online patch hits a free copy, gets a free copy of Shaq Fu, A Legend Reborn on Switch when it is available this fall to express our gratitude. So, I don't know when that online patch comes out, but I may buy NBA Playgrounds just because then I get two for one. Yeah. Shaq Fu and NBA Playgrounds. I mean, yeah. and who doesn't want Shaq Fu? And supposedly they feel a lot of remorse about the whole patch thing and they've been adding. It seemed like it's a few extra features are really, really putting a lot of care into making sure that it's, you know, I think actually what it was is they've cut the file size down like in half and uh, made it so much more secure and, what you know, um, just their, their code improvements that they've done yeah. has made it so much and more efficient and everything. So that'd be really cool. I just was... It kind of got a little bit of mixed reviews, and so I wasn't totally sure if I want to get that yeah. game or not. And also, Shaq Fu has never been particularly like of On incredible radar? interest to me. Although it does look like, I mean, it's kind of just a nostalgic. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's actually a decent game, but I thought it was more of kind of like just the, you know, the f- funny humorous aspect of it that it's a shack game and just how random that is and it's i think it's kind of like a um, a beat em up sort of thing where you're shack yeah. with a basketball and um, and that sounds very i love streets of rage and those kinds of games so i could actually really enjoy that game i just don't know if i want to go the whole route of getting nba like i wonder what the price of shack Fu will eventually be if it's 20 bucks you know when it comes out Probably and this 10 or 15 and yeah. this is 30 then uh, it's not a big. I would think that's actually a really great deal because then it's basically yeah, getting definitely. this for fifteen or ten or fifteen bucks. So I'm yeah, doing it. Yeah, actually, I don't know if I'm doing it. That's not confirmed or not. But I'm just so I have to be really careful about what I'm buying right now. I do have Arms and Splatoon two taken care of, but um, anything else is like I real. I, I've been wanting to get Street Fighter and stuff, and that's ridiculously priced. I'm really bummed with Nintendo for not doing any of, like, I have 372 gold uh, coins on their My Nintendo, and a whole bunch of discounts and games I can get for the Wii U and the 3DS, but nothing out for the Switch yet. So E3 is right around the corner. I'm hoping we hear something about uh, using those points, some rewards. I bet we're going to get, like, they're probably going to, you know, dive into a little bit of the online stuff, which we're going to talk about that here soon. But I bet they're going to clear up, you know, you know, my Nintendo stuff and, yeah. you know, what to expect out of Switch this year. Like, I think E3 will be like a presentation 2.0 for the Switch. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, because um, I think they actually I mean, with Odyssey being the focus, it's pretty much Switch focused. You know, 3DS will probably get a mention here or there. But I think beyond Hey Pikmin and uh, um, Miitopia or something this summer, there's not too much 3DS on the horizon besides... You know, like Fire Emblem Warriors, like Fire Emblem Echoes was pretty much the last huge 3DS thing. And so I can't imagine it getting too much of a talk at E3. Um, Speaking of E3, number five, E3 is just a week away. And next week will most likely be our predictions episode. Um, However, we have received more details on Splatoon 2 um, and the World Inkling Invitational and the 2017 Arms Open Invitational, including the commentary from our beloved D1 so you can visit e3.nintendo.com for more details on the timing of these events and what teams are going to be playing. But I can't wait for D1 to be doing commentary on ARMS. Yeah, that's, I'm thinking he has, I mean, he's really knowledgeable on Smash and like very, very yeah. knowledgeable as he's done years and years of it. But how much of how much is, of ARMS has he played and how in-depth will he be? Well, who, I mean, who would be good at yeah, the ARMS one, true, you know? Like you have to get, he's good at commentary, yeah. so... Might as well just pick someone that can at least do that. And he, they, I think they mentioned, um, or maybe he mentioned, I mean, review copies are out for ARMS. Yeah, surely he's like, got one. I, but I would. Yeah, he, he probably has one and has been playing and testing with friends probably, like that play Smash. And he's probably getting very familiar with the game and probably playing it. If he has a review copy, he's probably playing it, you know, nonstop for the next few weeks to be prepared for the Invitational. So 
that's gonna be awesome can't wait for that I mean, they've, <laughs> they've done so good at these invitationals at e3 like it just it gives us that stage presence for nintendo which is awesome and last on the nintendo pipeline number six there is another neo geo game this week called last resort a shoot 'em up game with lasers grenades and more so go check that out if, and if you're still playing your 3ds you can pick up Farming Simulator this week as well. And so those are a couple games out this week if you're looking for something to play on the Switch. Otherwise, it's a pretty slow week news-wise. I don't think we're going to have too much extra videos for you guys this week because there's just not too much to react to, and E3 is just around the corner. So um, that's all that for that. And so with that, we can give a satisfying flush and watch the news swish and swoosh into oblivion. And now on to the topic of the show, which is not updated in my notes. The Nintendo Switch Online. This week, we got a little bit of new information regarding Nintendo's paid online service, which has now been delayed, so to speak, to 2018, along with some information on the first look at this service with Splatoon 2 this summer. So let's go through the information provided by Nintendo, other news outlets, and then we'll just go ahead and share what we think. And so, direct from Nintendo's website, dis describing uh, the Nintendo online service, this paid service Let's Nintendo Switch owners enjoy online multiplayer gaming as well as a dedicated smartphone app that connects to your Nintendo Switch system and helps you connect with friends for online play sessions. Check back for mo more details on the service before the official launch, which as we mentioned is in 2018. We knew that Nintendo was going to be doing an app for this, so that's nothing new, um, but we didn't know it was going to be 2018. It was supposed to be this year. Yep. Um, so then they give some bullet points detailing what the online service encompasses. And so first, there's online play on Nintendo Switch. And they say you'll be able to play compatible co-op and competitive games online by signing into your Nintendo account. And online play will be free for Nintendo account holders until our paid online service launches in 2018. And so after this, quote, free trial period, most games will require a paid online service subscription from Nintendo in order to play online. Interesting there, they say most games because... Maybe there's going to be some games even by Nintendo that don't necessarily require this online paid thing. Yeah. Um, but it seems to be safe to say that most will require it. I would say if they want. maybe things like the Neo Geo leaderboards, really insignificant. Um, maybe yeah. like shop access for DLC purchases or something like that. You know, I, I bet yeah. nothing really super hardcore. What I, that is interesting is when they say that you'll be able to play compatible co op games, like what are their plans for that and will. Like, for example, if they did a port of 3D World or something, will we be able to do some of those co-ops online finally? Oh, yeah. Like, will they do some of that almost the share play sort of thing? Um, would be really awesome. Because yeah, it seems or even like Splatoon, like go through the campaign together. Yeah. Or, um, yeah, so that's interesting. That Yeah, they have compatible co-op and competitive games. So, hmm, yeah, that's interesting. I didn't even really catch that. And then last for the online play on Nintendo Switch, this service is only for Nintendo Switch. None of this affects online play or features for the Wii U or Nintendo 3DS family of systems. So if you're still playing your 3DS or Wii U, you don't have to pay anything. It's the same as always. Uh, moving forward, there's online lobby and voice chat. The uh, Nintendo says our new dedicated smart device app will connect to Nintendo Switch and let you invite players or friends to play online, set play appointments, which I think is super cool, and chat with friends during online matches in compatible games all from your smart device. Um, so this is a point of contention for some people because they're like, what is this even doing? Like, why wouldn't I just use like a Skype app or a Discord or anything like that or just a phone call with my smartphone? Um, where I personally think this is going to excel is, you know, you have an appointment with someone, you know, Zach and I are going to play Smash Bros at 9 p.m. and this app will send a reminder. You just log into your lobby, the game connects you immediately like with the app like you guys are just put in the same lobby and then your voice chat starts right up once you're connected like i think it's just kind of about streamlining the experience mm -hmm. so you're not juggling a bunch of apps and services it's all just in this one thing which you probably would have your smartphone on you anyway but not to be apologetic for nintendo like i mean obviously you could do that on the switch too but um we've actually used facebook chat for several things actually like you know overwatch or when we play destiny together or games like that we've used facebook before so and we were Even playing Mario Kart. together yeah yeah um so well yeah and the, and a free li we'll get a look at this version or at this app um this summer in just a couple months with splatoon they'll be having that version available with splatoon yeah so 
Uh, you were going to say something? Yeah, I think that it's it's not... I really like the streamlinedness of it. I think that it'll be really good to be able to conveniently send invites to uh, your friends and stuff. It seems it, in the games currently, there's not as easy like with steam or you know our blizzard games playing overwatch or civ and stuff it's very easy for me to send you a quick invite just right click your name it seems like this app will allow me to more easily communicate with you in terms of getting us into matches and games together like also with splatoon and stuff for example um we've had to join the lobby at the same time if we're trying to go into a match that's not necessarily Mm -hmm. you know I don't know. It works strangely um, where you can get into a match together if you're not. Or even Mario Kart can be super tedious right. sometimes. And this seems like, like trying to get into the same lobby together. Yeah, but. and this will eliminate all of that hassle. And really, I don't think it's the only issue I see is the fact that it has this extra dongle. We'll get to that with the headset and everything. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure how exactly that. That's what I'm probably most curious to find out how they execute if you actually need to have that in or if there's a possibility that you could just have the audio playing on your TV and that's only necessary for hearing the audio from the Switch sort of thing. I'm curious how they're going to actually address it all. But I am excited. I think that it sounds very promising in terms of how um, they're setting that all up. It um, With the PS4 and how their party chat and everything works, it seems the UI is programmed or set up a little bit differently where that's easier you can also hold down the ps button and get to different menus it doesn't seem like with the switch and how quick they try to get you from everything there's not as much of a os even going on it seems you know it's just kind of launching games that to it a lot of people it seems are very disappointed about this and seem it's kind of backwards but i'm kind of thinking that this that that it's not even possible. The only way that they can even do this is through an app because of how it's a yeah. sacrifice one for the other. If you wanted this on the Switch, it'd probably be bogged down a little bit more with more OS and more algorithms mm-hmm. and things that has to do with this. Coding At least it'll on, all yeah. be on a separate device. So I think that's yeah, because really pe- that's like the big the biggest praise right now for the Switch is how easy it is to get in and out, and people are playing more of the Switch than ever because of how easy it is to get in and out. And it's yeah, it's an interesting thought of like, well, if you want it to be your PlayStation where it has notifications and connection to your friends and party chats and lobbies and it schedules you on the system and it's constantly keeping a tab of who's been in a party and how long they've been playing and what trophies they have and just all this stuff constantly going on on the playstation's mind Mm -hmm. you know you wouldn't be able to get in and out of the switch as fast it's like would you rather be able to get in and out or have an app and honestly like just i mean even though i guess i just maybe i've accepted it because this is the way it is but i would prefer having the app and making the switch faster yeah, like, like I would, I just prefer that. So, mm. um, but that's interesting, and it'll be nice to get a look at it, um, in in the summer, um, of 2017, just next month with Splatoon. Maybe even beforehand. Maybe we'll get a look at it soon. Maybe E3 will actually shed some light on that. Maybe they'll have a whole. You can download it right now and use it for Mario Kart or something like that. Or Arms this weekend because Arms will be coming out. I didn't even think maybe they'll be using it for Arms when Arms comes out, but. Mm. Um, next up with the online play or online service of Nintendo is the classic game selection with the name subject to change. And the classic game selection allows subscribers to uh, be able to download a compilation of classic titles with added online play, such as Super Mario Bros. 3, Balloon Fight, and Dr. Mario, as the three examples given. Um, and some clarification with this, actually, let me scroll down here. Um, people were asking, is this the virtual console now? And Forbes reports that speaking with Famitsu, a Nintendo rep said that the classic game selection is different from Virtual Console, um, with the translation coming from Polygon. Meanwhile, the timeline for Virtual Console sales is still undecided. And Kotaku clarified that the classic game selection, um, what, what it was when they reported that, quote, Nintendo Switch Online subscribers will have an ongoing access to a library of classic games with added online play. Users can play as many of the games as they want, as often as they like, as long as they have an acti- active subscription. Nintendo Switch Online subscribers will be able to play a wide variety of games, including Super Mario Bros., B- Balloon Fight, Dr. Mario, all those that we just mentioned, and more games will be announced at a later date. At launch, the classic game library will include only NES games, Super NES games, 
continue to be under consideration, but we have nothing further to announce at this time. And so going back to the notes from the actual website that we get of Nintendo, it seems as though this is kind of like a Netflix almost yeah. of Nintendo games where you can watch Netflix as much as you want, but once you obviously you're not paying for Netflix, you can't keep watching your shows, even if you know you played or watched the show once. And <clears throat> Or it's kind of like also like the Xbox Game Pass, which if you've seen what that is, if you have an Xbox Live subscription, you can add on the Game Pass and play these games as often as you like. And they actually even provide um, discounts for Xbox Game Pass holders, which leads us to the next thing that the online service will provide Nintendo eShop deals, which are special offers for subscribers, which may include discounts on select digital games and content. And Street so, Fighter! Yeah, so it seems like seems like Nintendo is kind of setting up this Netflix, Game Pass, you know, PlayStation Now sort of service with their classic virtual console library. But if you want to own these games forever beyond a subscription, that's where Virtual Console will come in, and we don't know when that's coming yet. Could be before this. Like I don't think it's confirmed that's coming later. It's just not on their marketing PR speak for now. Um, and before we get to maybe dissecting all this classic game selection, I should note the pricing real quick. Um, the one-month membership for this for all of this online service, including the online lobby, the app, the classic game selection, the eShop deals, which could pay for this subscription itself one month is four dollars um, a month if you pay month by month if you pay three dollars or if you pay for three months at a time it's eight dollars for the three month chunk which is roughly two dollars monthly or if you pay for a full year it's only 20 bucks which amounts to about a dollar 66 a month and so i mean putting down 20 bucks for a year of your online play that's glorious. Is, glorious. Is perfect. I mean, it's like a small, you know, courtesy fee for using the servers. Um, and this includes online. Oh, oh, so this, and this is what's included for the online subscribers. Online gameplay, online lobbies, the voice chat app, classic game selection, and eShop deals are exclusive to paying members. But if you choose not to pay, you still have access to the eShop, your friends list, screenshot sharing, and the parental control app. But that means if you don't pay this subscription, you probably won't be able to play Mario Kart online or Minecraft online or things like that, or even ARMS. And so um, be on the lookout for that because a lot of Nintendo players are not used to having to pay for things like Mario Kart. They plug in Mario Kart when they get home and it's like, wait, what? I can't play online? I have to pay, you know, they'll probably just be like, I have to pay four bucks? Like, what in the world? Mm. So seems like a lot when you, you know, or maybe a kid not expecting that to put down four bucks just to play online. Yeah. You know, I think this is really awesome. Time. The whole idea of a Netflix, like if they just did this for their virtual console and released all the you know, NES games, SNES games, it maybe at least had it so that you added it to your collection somehow or on your home screen so that it at least kept track of time or something. I would like th something like that. Um, it'd be really cool if they added a sort of achievement system to these games, kind of like Sony has with old PS2 games. Um, if they finally did something like that, um, yeah. The way that they address this as not being the replacement for Virtual Console, though, is kind of interesting to me. I mean, it makes sense. A lot of people have also stated this that you know it's just it would be ridiculous for Nintendo uh, not to charge eight dollars per game for a whole bunch of virtual console well yeah i think i think with the virtual console like i could imagine this maybe even being called you know virtual console monthly or something where you know you get your virtual console games but then virtual console you know prime or whatever it is yeah is where you actually get to own it and maybe like they're maybe they're one in the same like you go to the menu you see super mario brothers 3 and there's an option to click play if you you know purchase with or play with credit with subscriber credit or purchase as a separate thing you know like what is it is it audible or something like that or maybe even amazon where amazon i think is a better example because netflix doesn't like sell movies but amazon has it where you know you can watch it with your prime subscription or you can buy the movie hd or sd you know or standard definition like they always have those options because they rotate in and out movies yeah i, mean, I guess so you might like want that option if you wanted to I mean, because you'll have to have an internet connection, most likely, for um, for it to know that you're still subscribed and everything. So no matter where you are, these selections will not be able to be taken portably with you. 
Um, you know, because That's a good point. So there'll have to be some option to either download it so that there can be offline play with it, or you know something like that. I was also thinking about how um, this is temporarily called the classic game selection, and I'm I am wondering if there's any sort of implication that classic games sort of implies you know the nes and that maybe they'll just keep it to more of you know because a lot of people have complained i've bought super mario bros like 20 times and i don't want to have to buy it Mm -hmm. again and so maybe they'll take care of at least these basic classic games like super mario bros 2 and 3 and uh balloon fight and some of these really classic super classic games but it does make me kind of—it's kind of confusing, and they could change the name because they—they kind of specifically said it's a placeholder and subject to change, because I—I I, yeah. I do think of N64 and SNES games now, and I think a lot of people do as classic games, and so they'd have to do something a little more specific, I think, about that. But I could see them doing, you know, that where it's NES are kind of regulated to here. We've also done the NES Classic uh, or NES Mini that. So yeah, that that's what I think is interesting because they have the NES Classic right now, and then they have the Classic Game Selection. So it's just interesting they have the Classic word in both those branding. Yeah, you know, are they going to do SNES Classic, and then you know the Virtual Console is called you know Virtual Console cl- you know or Classic Collection or something like that. You know, like right. are they going to play up this Classic brand? Like I wonder if that you know in in fo- or what is it focus testing? Like I wonder if people like that word for some reason like maybe a sense of nostalgia when you say oh this is classic this is the my classic catalog of games or something like that and so maybe they're going to rebrand things all together to focus on that classic brand because they've already done it with the nes classic where it's the nes classic unit and the nes classic carrying case and the nes classic controller you know and i don't and they have that logo where it's like red and classic you know like i just wonder if that's something they're going to go move forward with because well, we see it here with the online I can look service. it up real quick because I remember in the GBA days um, they did a classic line of like Zelda and uh, yeah I think it was called Classic NES um, hmm. yep, Classic NES series and so they've done this classic they did it back with the Game Boy Advance and specifically with NES games and so maybe they just are that's kind of like an NES tag that they have is like these are the classics very you know yeah 80s sort of era of nintendo Eh, it's a possibility yeah well we'll know more i think we're gonna know more in a week um next week we'll have our e3 predictions episode where maybe we'll make like a list of five predictions or something um each and go through those um pending you know any news that comes out this week um, but hopefully we'll have some discussion on what we think is going to happen. Hopefully nothing leaks so we can actually have an honest discussion because we'll record next Sunday. Or maybe we'll record on Saturday or something because Sunday is Bethesda and Xbox, which I really want to tune into. So um, maybe we'll have to record on Saturday or something um, in order to do – because, yeah, E3 is next week, right? Um. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll record this Saturday maybe or Sunday – um, get our episode up before Nintendo's E3, which is on Tuesday morning. Um, and then they have the Invitational, I think, in the afternoon and at night for Splatoon and ARMS. And then throughout the week, they're obviously going to have, like, Treehouse live streaming. So that gives us time to do a predictions episode before the actual show. And even before, you know, Bethesda or, you know, Ubisoft will have their conference and most likely talk about the Rabbids game and things like that. And so um, maybe we can do a show before all of that happens so we can get some. I mean, we don't know yet if we're going to be doing anything during the actual show. Personally, I usually like just to watch it. Um, I know it's not maybe the best for someone that wants to grow the channel and, you know, like talk about Nintendo on the Internet and be known for that. But I just like to watch the show. Well, and plus, I mean, what you guys are seriously, if we did a live stream, you're just going to be watching our faces, watch the watch the show yeah, and maybe a couple yeah. times where we're like oh but you can kind of yeah. guess if you're gonna go if you're going oh we're also going oh so yeah <laughs> or the entire rest of the time we're mum- mumbling like where is animal crossing switch like <laughs> just crying and wondering where it is pokemon Man, I, I, pokemon I think Stadium we freaked out i think we freaked out like when they had the amiibo festival trailer and we were like yeah it's happening yeah then they're like a bored 
or some dice fall across the screen. Um, to close out the show, let's real quick talk about um, a quick look that we got at Splatoon 2's headset configuration. Uh, we kind of mentioned this, but um, for those of you that haven't seen the image going around, um, we actually won't even really touch on this. It's just basically, if you've seen the image, it's your Switch has a cord which connects to a dongle, and that dongle is also connected to your phone, and both your phone and your Switch are connecting to the end of the dongle, which then the dongle connects to your headset through another cord, and so you have three cords on your lap, on the couch, with your Switch, your phone, and the headset on your head. It's like, what in the world <laughs> is happening? And with the curious thing with this that, Zach, you were mentioning earlier, is what if you're trying to use all of this and you don't have, like, and you don't have your uh, your Switch nearby, like, you're using the TV, do you just not get the audio then of your, your Switch? Like, I guess you can't because it, the audio is coming in from the dongle. So you just have your phone audio, but then you have your headset on, so you, like, are muffling out the noise of the TV, like, can the app stream the audio of your game? Like, how it, that wouldn't be able to sync well, I don't think. But maybe audio isn't that much of a thing to send. And maybe that's why we're paying good money for this app. It's just like, what in the world well, is happening? But I've heard it's that, sold out in, like, Japan. Yeah. Like, the headset's, like, well, selling, like, bonkers. Uh, you know, have you heard the stories about the whole, uh, the box of just the Switch box of Splatoon 2? And a no. whole bunch of people, uh, it's, like, sold out, just the box because people want the Splatoon box. I mean, Splatoon is absolute madness in Japan, so it doesn't really surprise <laughs> me that even if something absolute crap of Splatoon came out, it would just be gobbled up there. Um, but I have heard reports that there was an, is- an initial image floating around that showed very, very small um, cord length for these um, the dongles, specifically that go into your phone and the Switch, and people were like, how on earth? This doesn't even make sense. These are like super small. It's like the NES Classic all over again where you know everybody's got to be all huddled together to play and what's actually they've come out and said that i I believe and you can kind of see it in the illustration that there's the squiggly lines between all of the the wires which shows that they're actually longer than they're being um, presented as and supposedly these cords are actually like four meters long each or something like that and so it should be really no problem um, at least like for me and stuff, I mean, it'll be a lot of cord, um, but it's what it's seeming like is that it's not going to be a huge issue to have all the cords and have enough length to reach your switch unless you're at a really ridiculous, um, you know, ways away from your switch, then you might have a what difficulty. I've- but if it's like on the couch and your TV is just like 10 feet away or something, you should really have no problem. I wonder though if you can use this. Like, if the dong, it seems like the dongle is connecting two different audio inputs and converting them into one. And so I wonder if you can plug in, you know, like something else into it, like two phones and have two chats going on at the same time. Or plug in, you know, like I can plug this into my PlayStation and then plug it into my Switch and listen to two different games at the same time. Uh, yeah. This could just be a cool device, regardless of the switch. You can listen to two things at the same time. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! Anyway, that concludes Copi Podcast episode fifty-nine. Thank you so much for listening. As we talked about Nintendo Online voice chat and the Virtual Console, I love that title because I never realized that voice chat and Virtual Console are just both VC VC. And so thank you so much for listening to episode 59. Episode 60 will be our E3 predictions show as we lead up into E3. And then 61 will be our reactions to everything announced at E3. Hopefully wow. some good stuff. Honestly, we don't even really know what's happening. Like, we know it's Super Mario Odyssey, but we don't know beyond that if there's anything, you know, new Switch games. If we're going to see Fire Emblem Switch, if we're going to see, you know, the Zelda DLC. We don't know if we're going to be able to see anything regards to Smash Bros. Like, there was that leak this past week that was confirmed fake, but... I never know how it was confirmed fake because I think it was just like Game Explain tweeted out like, "Hey, this is fake," and we're like, "Where's your proof?" And they're like, "It's just fake. Don't worry about it." Yeah, but, I think it's I think um, it's basically confirmed fake. Um, yeah, Artsy Omni tweeted out that apparently there's some font inconsistencies. Yeah, and he well, was and the one also, that did the Rayman leak. Also, the emulators of 3DS and Wii U have been out for quite a while and are doing actually very very well. I think you can run Smash like full speed on a 3DS emulator on your PC now, and people are doing like graphics hacks and hd um texture packs yeah yeah so you can do really make it look convincing um and a couple people especially like the luigi picture on the destroy the 
um, the crystals or whatever. It looked very much just like a 3DS up picture. And so that was yeah. kind of some, some of the stuff that was pointed out. I know that last year's E3, we were so deprived for something new because it was just like all Zelda that um, even when they were like showing a little bit of Pokemon and I think it was like as you approached somebody, the screen started to dim slightly and we were like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> well, I had like the exclamation point thing. It was so cool. Yeah. And like, oh, the info button next to your attacks. We were like, no way! <laughs> Then they spent like a million hours on Pokemon Go, and we were like, no one cares or will ever care about this game. Like, Pokemon Go is the worst thing. No one's going to care about it. It's going to be trash. Move on. And then we were all wrong. But, yeah, yeah, no, we have no idea what to expect from E3. Seems like it's, seems weird that it's so ARMS focused because ARMS will come out that weekend. Like, it's like a last minute push for it, but it's just like, I don't really care about that at E3. I want to Yeah, we're see... sold on that, so we can move on. Yeah. You've had a direct dedicated to it. A couple of them now, so let's uh mm-hmm. let's yeah. I just want oh, I well. mean if they did it dedicated to Odyssey, I'd be pretty hyped. I I mean, hopefully we get the extra things beyond that and some switch explanation about what the future holds for that. But um, even if they made it mostly dedicated to Odyssey, I'd be pretty satisfied since we really, I'm really hyped to find out more about that game and what exactly, like, what's going on with it? Why are there people in the Mario world? What is their direction? New Donk the, City. Yeah. Um, so I'm excited What's for the that. deal with New Donk City? Because Mario is the best. So. Yeah. Real quick. Um, yeah. It were, I, I believe they've confirmed that they're going to do mostly Super Mario Odyssey at the yeah. show. Mm-hmm. Um, I wonder if they're going like, to do a whole, you know, like they did with Zelda where you walk in and you feel like you're in Odyssey or something. You're in New Donk Real City. quick, before we close out the show, we'll just do a quick rapid fire question from good old Noah Kenny. Oh. And he says, I've got a question for next time. If you think they're going to do a Super Smash Bros. release on the Switch, do you think they would add more DLC characters, like maybe more Street Fighter characters, like Ken, or do you think they'll just keep the roster the same? So if they, basically, if they do like a Super Smash Deluxe on the Switch, are they adding characters or anything like that? I don't think they're going to add Street Fighter characters in. I think uh, that was kind of a one-time thing. But I could imagine them adding in, you know, the Inkling or something as a fighter. Yeah. Um, maybe adding in ice climbers That'd if that's awesome. possible now. Yeah, I could, um, I could something like that. I could definitely see that. Um, like one thought. I mean, were the Splatoon Inklings added in Deluxe? Are they brand new? I mean, Boo was right. Oh, There's at least in, a few new characters. Right? Yeah, Inklings are brand new. Okay, yeah. So I mean, yeah, I totally see them adding a character or two. I was gonna say, I mean, I think at least maybe gonna... arm like Springman. Yeah, that be Spring awesome. Because I mean, all of those are fighting characters, so they really that would actually make um arms characters would probably fit a lot easier than any splatoon characters although um who do we have it's kind of, they could kind of do like a sort of fox um a fox thing with the splatoon guy Inkling, I mean, yeah inklings um they could turn to a little inkling i think you know of course at least they're going to release it and all of the dlc will be added for free it'll be like an all exclusive yeah. just the deluxe version so we'll have all those guys i can see them definitely doing that and yeah, I, I would say an arms or an inkling would be like the highest contender for a new. Yeah. I I don't know. Maybe Street Fighter since we also just got maybe at the Invitationals they'll announce that. Yeah, you know, we got a brand new Invitational show. starts and they do a trailer for Super Smash and that'd it's just awesome. like Springling. Do you want there? <laughs> He'd be freaking out. Like that'd be Smash Bros. High. Like little uh, little the little sound like shing like starts and you just hear oh. Oh, yeah, it just seems oh, like that's. Oh, I can totally picture that in this little uh, the newcomer screen that they pull up and no. like Springman joins the fray, but also I could see the inklings too. Springs into action. Yeah, springs into. Yeah, totally. Um, I see that. I see that as a huge possibility. Smash is like you know they're gonna have to put Smash out on the Switch, um, in some iteration. They better not wait until the next Smash, you know. And so I don't think they're waiting. I mean, we got. We're getting Mario Kart, Zelda, Super Mario, and Splatoon this year, and Fire Emblem at the start of next year. I think Super Smash Switch is a summer 2018 game. Like, I think it's the next in the docket. Like, mm, yeah. let's go. I think we'll. I think we'll hear about it at this E3. Have a release and invitational next year for it. Yeah, like that's that's how I see it happening. So thanks for the question, Noah Kinney, and getting us hyped for E3. It's just around the corner. Can't wait. I mean, I've been kind of so excited for some more details on Destiny 2 and how, you know, PlayStation's going to be pulling everything together because they had, like, 
kind of lots of smokes and mirrors last year where it was just a bunch of exclusives that were years and years off like how's project scorpio going to come together with xbox and how's that going to change up the game like i'm so excited for kind of all of that aspects of it and i've already been so in love with my switch that i kind of forgot like wait nintendo has even more stuff coming like They've been kind of keeping us spoon fed for a long time with the presentation and then the directs at the past few months. Like, I feel pretty good. Wait, we're getting more details? Like, we know what the NX is. What else can they say? Yeah. And so yeah. I'm excited. I kind of forgot about that. But now Noah Kinney has me all pumped on E3 now. So thank you for that question. And thank you so much for listening to Copi Podcast Episode 59. We'll be back next week with E3 predictions. But until next time. <gasps> cool. <laughs>